Morning all. Um, just wanted to do a quick bit about CMT Shark and Marrow Tooth. Um, consider it a sort of five or ten minute CPD bullet. Um, I was lucky enough to go to the CMT UK conference at the weekend. Um, met lots and lots of lovely people, um, many of whom had wonderful stories to tell about how podiatrists had helped them. Uh, many of whom had depressing stories to tell about how podiatrists didn't help them because they didn't know enough about the condition. So. CMT, few things to know about it. Uh, Shark married tooth, no relation to Shaco foot. Uh, that is just the guys who um, named it. Uh, first of all, it is a genetic condition. Uh, it is an autosomal dominant condition, which means that if one of the parents has it and the other one doesn't, there is a 50% chance that one of the kids will have it. So you will almost always have a family history in terms of diagnosis. So it's rarely one of those things that, you know, we are able to diagnose it for people that don't know they've had it. That said, um, it can crop up de novo, um, which means that it can crop up as a new problem. Um, so we always have to be aware of that as a possibility. Thing number two is that it is a neurological condition. Um, having said that, most of our interest in it will come in the um, sequelae, in the musculoskeletal secondary conditions. Um, so it is um, it's not a metabolic job like diabetes. Um, it is purely neurological, but the sequelae, the secondary symptoms are not. Uh, it comes in two different flavours um, or two different categories of flavour. Uh, CMT1 is demyelinating. Um, so it affects the myelin sheath around the nerves. CMT2 is axonal, um, i.e. it affects the nerves themselves. CMT1 is by far the more common of the two. And there are subcategories of CMT1A, CMT1B and that sort of thing, which is to do with which nerve is damaged. Uh, uh, which um, chromosome, I'm sorry, um, is affected. <coughs> but for our purposes, uh, if you just remember, CMT1 is demyelinating, CMT2 is axonal. In terms of the presentation, um, it initially presents with um, a slowdown in nerve transmission, um, and it is detectable before symptoms uh, are extant uh, by nerve testing. Um, the first symptoms that generally seem to crop up are muscle weakness, um, which is not uh, even across all of the muscles. It seems to affect the perineals and the triceps psori, the calf group, um, first. So what you will see uh, is an increasingly caboid foot shape um, with foot drop. Um, and later on, um, usually tightening of the calves uh, into a fixed plantar flexion deformity uh, with inversion. So in terms of the sort of classic CMT foot, if you conceived it as the same sort of foot as you'd see in advanced diabetes, that, um, that high arch rigid cavus foot with poor intrinsic strength and tight triceps psori, you wouldn't be a million miles wrong. Um, obviously diabetes, you've got the, the three different um, spheres, the neurological, vascular and the immune. Um, in CMT, it is mainly just the neurological. Uh, but if you consider CMT to present as not dissimilar to the neurological elements of diabetes, as I say, it, it, it's a slightly clumsy metaphor. You don't tend to get as much painful neuropathy with CMT, although you can, um, but you wouldn't be a million miles wrong if you thought that. Uh, obviously, uh, the sequelae from that are going to be high plant pressures. Um, and digital deformities and such like, all the stuff that we're familiar with. And later on, um, you can get sensory neuropathy as well. Uh, sensory neuropathy seems to happen after motor neuropathy in CMT, uh, and it doesn't always happen, uh, but you can get sensory neuropathy. So again, it parallels the neurological elements of diabetes to a degree. Um, in terms of what we can do about it, in terms of our role in the management of CMT, uh, early stages, um, when we're in the realms of um, just starting to get muscle weakness, um, we can have a role in terms of helping with the physio side of things, strengthening exercises, um, stretching exercises to try and stop uh, muscles which are not working so well from shortening. 
um, in terms of the uh, digital deformities uh, when they are in the early stages. Uh, we can again do stretches, there are all sorts of different types of splints that you can use to try and stop those extensors from tightening up into that position. You might not be able to stop the toes from doing that, but if you can stop them being fixed in that position, then that is useful. Um, muscle test, uh, nerve testing rather, and muscle testing. Uh, but nerve testing in the early stages, um, again, treat it like a screening program just as you would with diabetes for sensory and um, motor neuropathy. Muscle testing to track the progress. Um, and of course, if you're going to do a program of stretching and strengthening, then you have to have the muscle testing in place so that you can actually track the progress. Um, in the sort of middling stages, uh, when the foot drop is mild, we can help with things like boxier splints, the elasticated ones uh, that hold the, um, the foot from scuffing along the ground. Footwear advice, uh, resist the temptation to stick everybody into really, really deep shoes that accommodate insoles because of course it's really important that the shoes are light. That's one of the, the things that a lot of people came at the conference said to me that they've been advised to wear these big, heavy, clumpy shoes which they couldn't lift, which exacerbated the heel drop, the, the foot drop. So um, footwear advice, uh, boxier splints, uh, management of digital deformities. So again, stretching and splinting to try and stop the deformities becoming fixed. Accommodations, otter forms, silicon wedges, uh, elasticated supports, uh, taping, strapping, all of this sort of thing to manage the uh, minor, uh, lesser digital deformities. Um, in shoe devices uh, initially to help with balance um, and to help with um, coordination and support, um, but also to manage plant pressure because, of course, with the cavus foot, you always end up with high plant pressure. Uh, you're almost always going to end up with um, PMA callus, so sharp debridement of callus, um, and um, the right skincare regime in terms of the right emollient stroke urea based foot cream, um, home care instructions, that sort of thing. Um, so in the middling stages, that's where we, we really do our best work. They should also be under a physiotherapy for neuro rehab and an orthotist. Um, but as we all know, postcode lottery, uh, very often we end up doing a lot more of that sort of thing. And also, as we know, in terms of lesser toe deformities and that sort of stuff, um, podiatrists are king. Um, in the later stage deformities, they will usually end up in some form of AFO, uh, ankle foot orthotic. Um, so there might be modifications that we can do to that to manage plantar pressures. I saw an awful lot of silicon ankle foot orthoses um, over the weekend, uh, which are absolutely amazing. Um, so again, in shoe devices for plantar pressures. Um, in the later stages, when the deformities have become fixed, of course, we're in the realms of accommodation. We're in the realms of trying to um, make sure that uh, things don't become really, really painful and or ulcerate. And in the later stages in particular, we have to be aware of the threat of sensory neuropathy. So again, neuro screening every year at most, um, at most at least, more than once a year for preference, once a year at least. Yes, once a year at least. Uh, so neurological screening and all the same advice we would give to diabetics with potential sensory neuropathy, uh, that the screening tests are only screening tests, not assessments. Um, and that they should work on the basis that they have neuropathy even if they don't. So all of that educational stuff, that's all really, really useful. Um, and then unfortunately in the later stages, we will often end up managing plantar ulcerations, um, in which case the vulnerable foot team can do all the, the stuff that they do so well. And the MSK team can help with offloading, padding, strapping, that sort of stuff. So, it's a pretty broad condition. It affects a lot of different systems in the end. Um, and we are probably the best people to handle most of that sort of thing if you recognize it. Um, in terms of, if you're just gonna sum it up, if you wanted a 60 second assess, um, summary of CMT, think neurological elements of diabetes um, and you wouldn't be a million miles wrong. All right, hope that was helpful for everybody. Cheers. Bye.